So then on the income statement, or the profit and loss, we've got income, of course. Now income, we broke out into the billable expenses. That's when we use those billable items that so we didn't have control of the income account it went to. And then we've got the general sale of products, sale of services. Notice what we do not have. I don't have sale by customer. I didn't make a separate account by customer. I didn't make a separate account by individual service or inventory item that we sold, unit of guitar, for example, because that added detail, if we're using a full service bookkeeping system, meaning we're using invoices and sales receipts and items to, to report, we'll have sub ledgers for, right? So we have the sales, the sales uh, reports where you have sales by customer report and sales by product report. That's a common kind of error I think that people make. Now there are times that you might make uh, a, a sales account and put the customer name, like if you're getting paid by YouTube and you're using the deposit form through the bank feeds, like the bank feeds come through, you have a deposit form. Now you're not using a full service system. You're not using invoices. You're not using sales receipts, but just a deposit form. And therefore you might want to name your income account by who gave you the income, like the platform, like YouTube or something like that. But if you're using invoices and sales receipts, then typically you don't want to have a different income line item for every customer or every item that you sell. You want to group them together because you have those sub reports that can give you that added layer of detail without cluttering up your income statement. Now, obviously these go up with invoices and sales receipts. Income statement accounts by a general rule only go up. They only go up until we close them out at the end of the year, the closing process, resetting the odometer. So it goes back to zero and QuickBooks basically does that automatically. So, and so they, they go up and then the, the cost to get sold is an expense account for the sale of inventory. It's gonna go up whenever we make a sale or a invoice, sales receipt or invoice. And again, it only goes up typically, unless we have like a credit memo or something. And, and so th they go up and it only works that way if we're tracking inventory on a perpetual inventory system. If it were a periodic inventory system, we would have to make periodic adjustments to record the cost to get sold and the reduction of inventory by using a physical count of the inventory. And then we've got our expenses. We've got the payroll expenses, which were generated when we ran payroll. And then the supplies, uh, the, the, the telephone and utilities, usually the standard easy expenses to enter, kind of expenses to enter. Most of them are easy kind of expenses to enter. And they usually are entered with check forms or expense forms. These are the ones that can work quite well if you're using it. And notice that invoice is an anomaly because we were showing how that billable thing didn't work quite right so so don't don't let that one throw you off you don't want to have an invoice in there if it's in there it's messed up but so that's going to be so that's that and those are the ones you can usually set up with the bank feeds which we'll talk about and that works quite well usually for them if you're doing electronic transfers which we'll talk about in a future course or section and there's the net income the net income flows in to the balance sheet. That's how the balance sheet is part of the income statement or income statement is part of the balance sheet. And if I was to go up to another date of 2024, 010124 to 1231.24 and run it, you can see down here, the net income rolls into the equity account, which we changed from retained earnings to equity because it's a sole proprietor. 